I just had general sadness for Ace fans. Like legitimate general sadness for Ace fans. Perfect game. It only happened so many times, 24 times in almost 200 years of baseball. Well, at least 100 and something years of baseball, the modern era. But like, to me, the story is the Ace. They're the worst run organization in North American sports. I don't think there's anybody even close. Given their history, given what we believe to be their, their recent run of success, they are a successful franchise on the field over the last 20, 25 years. Yeah, they don't have playoff success. They've been really successful, really successful on the field. And then this last year, it's just, ugh. Ugh. I mean, can somebody lay down a bunt? No, can you I, slap one the other way? Can you do something? It, it's funny because, you know, fantasy baseball, you're seeing who's who. And I started Giancarlo Stanton yesterday. I'm like, oh, boy, he's of got course. a home run. Got a home run yesterday, two for three, three RBIs. But the game did not touch my television. And then I get the alert as well, MLB Network or MLB app. Domingo Herman is throwing a perfect game. And so then I was like, oh, I need to get to this. I started taking out the trash and the dishes, and I completely forgot about it. Completely forgot about it. I started watching The Bear again. The Bear on Hulu. Bears, excellent. Yeah, Episode finished season six. two. Already finished season two. And I just thought, oh, boy, I missed the perfect game. And I was like, these guys really got – really." so I watched a highlight. I watched yeah. the last little inning, went back on the MLB app, rewinded it a little bit, and I thought to myself, is there any franchise that's had a worse season – on and off the field in professional sports history. That was the first thing. I tweeted it last wow. night. I was like, I can't recall a no organization. When you think about fan engagement, yes. the lack of fan engagement, the lack of ownership, the lack of talent. I mean, all across the board. The lack pitching. of future I mean, talent. The fu farm system. Who I mean, knows about the A's farm system? I just saw the top 100 MLB. Duck. I mean, the, the A's, A's don't have one player. I, they, I think they have someone in the 70s or 80s. Think about that. And I think they just threw that in there. And then you think about off the field and what's going on and them moving or whatnot. I can't think of a professional team. There's been some bad teams. There have been some bad Warrior teams. There's been some bad Giant teams. Kings. There's been some bad 49er teams. Bad King teams. Bad Clipper teams. I mean, there's been some the bad teams. Bad, bad teams in professional sports history. Has there been a team? Or is there a team you think compares to this Oakland A's team. And I don't even want to rip on A's fans. No, this has I not, feel so bad for them. This is about that owner. But, this but is I mean, a reflection of ownership. I mean, ownership. All right, look, look at the pay to attendance yesterday. There's probably mostly Yankee fans because there's a lot of Bay Area Yankee fans. You got 12,479. When the Yankees used to come to town to play the A's, that place would be 30, packed. Yeah, no, plus. 40, 50. Well, I mean, I mean it's just, it's a, it is a, a Wednesday night. But, yes, I agree but with you. There would get be a lot. Crowds. Yes. Hey, we get big crowds when the I Red agree. Sox and Yankees come yeah, into town. The A's would sell out the Coliseum. And you think about the Coliseum and the history of that stadium. And what's going to happen to that stadium once the A's leave, or if they leave? I don't even know if they're leaving. Who the hell knows? Uh, at this point, but, I have no idea. I asked Spadoni the same. Look, Spadoni is riding or dying with this team. And I asked him, like, let's just say, hypothetically, it falls through in Vegas, and they just build a stadium magically, but it's the same ownership. Are you are you supporting them? That like I'm asking like genuinely, and I, I would probably still support them because I have a sickness and I'm addicted to it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if they if they change ownership, they get a stadium, A's fans will be back. I agree with that. There's A's fans out there. We saw the reverse boycott game. Over 27,000, another 10,000 stuck in traffic or whatnot, couldn't get in. There are A's fans out there. I, I'll still to, I'll go to my deathbed believing that we can have two baseball teams in this market. Now, I don't want to get into that conversation. But just thinking about the franchise and a, and a team on and off the field, has there ever been a worse season for a franchise I don't even like. What is their record right now? They're, they lose eleven to zero, eleven nothing. They're twenty one and sixty one through eighty two games. I've got eighty games left of this nonsense. Eighty games left. They may not win forty games. That's it. That's wow. They may not win forty. You know what they say in baseball? What's that? Sixty, you win. Sixty, you lose. What do you do with the other sixty? Well, I, or forty two. It is gone. I no, mean, in this case, I'm not even gonna. It, B, it's a great question. I didn't even know you posed that on the internet last night because I'm, I'm watching them and I'm like, they're the worst team in right yeah. now in terms of Q rating, in terms of fan engagement, in terms of ownership, in terms of on the field product, I mean, ratings. future prospects. I, I, I saw you like know, even the Owen sixteen Lions. If you look at that team, they were in it. They were in some games. I watched that last game. I'm I swear to God, that roster. I watched that last game against Green Bay on NFL ticket, and they were in that game. 
and it may have been Dorn Ola- uh what's his name from ESPN? Yeah, Olaski. Olaski. He may have been the guy who threw a pick six in that game, and it was like, oh, that's it. The Lions were in that game. So last night, 9.32 p.m., the A's are in the running for having one of the worst seasons on and off the field in sports history, and there's 80 games left. Sad. I can't, like, even when the Astros were bad, we knew they were bad and they were rebuilding and starting from scratch. They were starting from scratch and rebuilding that thing. The Tampa Bay Rays have had some bad teams, but they built, 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 finally broke through. They haven't looked back yet. And and they're in a great example of a team with a similar revenue issue, right, when it comes to not having the stadium and whatnot. And yet, you look at their on-field success, they're one of the most successful teams. Bang for buck, they might be the most you know powerful team in sports in, in terms of the amount of wins that they get out of the money that they're putting in. Yeah, Kings are the worst. B, B, here we go. The, the Owen 16 Lions, they were 2008. Listen to some of these names. Uh, I just have to say this name because I love this name. Darnell Bing, USC. Uh, Cliff Averill was on that team. Calvin Johnson was on that team. Dante Culpepper was on that team. I mean, there's some NFL players on some, that team. There's some names. There's some names. I look at this team that the A's are fielding right now. I mean, it, Paul Blackburn. Is okay. Ruiz. Mm. Ruiz is not bad. They dropped them to ninth for some reason. I guess he's not hitting, but they dropped them to ninth, and they got Tony Kent batting leadoff, and he's batting 179. I, I it's, just, almost like, it's almost like ownership malpractice. We're like, you know what? This Ruiz kid is playing too well. Let's <laughs> drop him to the bottom of the order. Just, Honestly, I don't even, the, it doesn't even make sense. What was the lowest point? Because I, I identified one, and I'd love to hear yours. Uh, my lowest point for the 49ers, where I knew it was like rock bottom, was when they lost to Johnny Manziel. And they were dancing on the sidelines, the Cleveland Browns, and they had like one victory over like a two-year period when they were dancing on the sideline and the 49ers lost to Johnny Manziel. That, to me, was like rock, rock bottom. Nah, that's not that's not it for me. What was? That's not even close to being it. What was it? I mean, you look at the Dennis Erickson years. You look at the Dennis Erickson years. They were not even competitive. They were not even... The second year, Dennis Erickson, they were two and fourteen. Yeah, they won an overtime they, they, game against Arizona. Yeah, they, they won an overtime game against Arizona. Both both their wins were overtime games against Arizona. Were they both overtime? They're I know both one overtime of them was wins. At home. Both I was both at games. That one. Both games against Arizona. Yeah, they won in overtime. They had a game against the Buffalo Bills late in the season. It was something like forty something to seven. I don't even know. If, it, it it was bad, and it was at home. But Bonte, this and they is... just got roll. But these, you got to understand. Back in 20, what year Yeah, is we this? still thought that the team 2004. was... 2004. I was 22 years old. Yeah. The Niners, I knew, one, 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 yeah, one, one, always true. in the playoffs. And when they went 2-14, and 14, and I said, oh, this is the real NFL. <laughs> Dennis Erickson, T.O.'s gone. You know, Jeff Garcia's gone. They were decrepit of so much talent. They had Brian Young hanging off for dear life in that uh, for that 49ers team. They were 2-14. and 14, And I was like... When is it going to change? When is it going to flip? Well, they did lose Garcia, Hurst, Owens, all like essentially all in a row there in that one off season. So, like, I, I get what you're saying, right? I, I man, I, this is Johnny Manziel's only moment in the NFL. Johnny Manziel has some talent, though. I'm not, I'm not too mad about that. They sucked and. Half the fan base wanted them to lose anyway. How about when uh, Kaepernick threw for like negative three yards in the that second half that against was, the Chicago Bears? That was bad against Chicago. I mean, that, that year felt like I mean, it, we knew it was bad. It just got worse and worse. Or you and know, worse. you know what, you know what is uh, another candidate for rock bottom for me? Yeah, give it to me, Dwight Clark Day. Ooh, that's a good call. Dallas that's Cowboys, a really good call. Dallas Cowboys. That's a really they played good call. Eric Reed at middle linebacker, and Ezekiel Elliott looked like Tony Dorsett. Eric Reed at linebacker. I and they dropped that. and they, they won remember like that? They, they won something like 40 to 10. Poor Eric Reed. I mean, they they rolled the 49ers on Dwight Clark Day. The Cowboys. That's right. The Cowboys. I mean, just absolutely steamrolled this team. And I just thought to myself, damn, Dwight Clark Day? And then you had Eddie DeBartolo Day, I think, later that season, or it may have been the year before, what? where Tom Brady and the Patriots came in and it was raining during Eddie DeBartolo. Eddie DeBartolo Sr.'s uh, ceremony uh, there at Levi Stadium, or Levi Stadium, Eddie Barlow Jr., I should say. Well, yeah, I remember when rock bottom was for me as a Warrior fan, at least in recent memory, it was when Baron Davis left and they had Corey Maggette out there. Remember when they overpaid for Corey Maggette? Oh, I do. Oh, I do. And I Ronnie do. Turioff got hurt running up and down the court, and I said, oh, season's over. Ronnie Turioff, season's Come over. On, people, this is crazy. And well, that, that moment might have been rock bottom for the go to State Warriors you fans. You think so? 
Oh, Rick, Chris Molly getting his jersey retired? The story. That was rock bottom. So, I that's mean, actually, you're probably that's, right. That's, you're that, probably right. That's when Bill Simmons came out with that great article, 60 yeah. Ways to, a fan of, uh, to Annoy a Fan Base on Grantland.com. Bill Simmons. <laughs> well, I think he's had some higher marks, man. Boy's doing well. Uh, but Grantland.com, that article. Uh, Bully, there, and there's so many storylines. I've heard it from Steiner. I've heard it from Pop. I heard it from Bully. heard it from Rick Barry. All the Dur- Darrell Wright played that game. He played that basketball game. Figure, go figure. Wow. In that moment where Bully is getting his number retired, and the fans are going crazy because one, the team's moving to San Francisco. Yeah. Two, or you could say one, two, one they A, just one traded B. Monte. Mont- Mont- traded Monte Ellis. Steps out with the ankle injury. Bogut Andrew Bogut has a micro fr- fracture right. injury. They're like, is he even going to play? Yeah. What is the direction of the franchise? That was another low, low moment where you just thought, Warriors are never going to get it right. They're never going to figure it out. Well, uh, what about for the Giants? I got one here first for that oh, one. Go. Oh, wow. I'm going to take my... Is it the day Brandon Belt left? <sighs> Okay, maybe I have two. No, my rock bottom is going to probably be like the end of the 2019 season. It was Bruce Bochy's last game, and uh, they were celebrating the end of his career in probably in front of like maybe 30,000 Dodger fans who took oh over my Oracle God. Park. It's like right. a 15 nothing drubbing. It's like, this oh. is how we're sending Bruce Bochy out. Was like, that what, come on. The Pence Scooter? Was that when was that he had the, the Pence scooter? scooter game? I no, think no, he did. No. That was wasn't that the, the Pitt scooter, scooter game. game. All <laughs> I know is there was just no Giants fans there at all at that game. It was what? just like we are sending out the greatest manager in the San in the San Francisco era of Giants baseball. Maybe the greatest manager ever in Giants baseball history. McGraw on line one. And yeah, sure. Him and McGraw. I, I, I just had there are probably less Dodger fans at John McGraw's last game than Bruce Bochy's last game. Let's say that. That's pretty good. Well, it's a hundred pinch scooter game. Was that the year before that, twenty eighteen? Where they lost like fifteen to one, and uh, the Dodgers was, were celebrating. Because Pence was on the the Rangers in nineteen, though, right? So that's what I'm saying. So yeah, I then the, the Pence scooter game was probably eighteen. Twenty eighteen, they had lost like fifteen to one on the final day of the year, and this fool's riding around on a on a, oh, on a I, scooter. And I, I wrote was an art- so pissed. Oh, I wrote an article in the Examiner about it. I really? was irate. <laughs> I was irate. Irate. I mean, that was embarrassing. That like like seriously, that was just and I love Hunter Pence. He's a good no, dude. No, I love him too. But it they was, lost. They lost fifteen to nothing. Fifteen. Uh, wow. Fifteen to nothing. And, really, they, and, the, and the Dodgers are celebrating, clinching the NL West. I believe. I just remember I was at the that series the last year of twenty eighteen and the last year twenty nineteen. Last year's twenty nineteen, and yeah, just the amount of Dodger fans that were in Oracle Park that day was just absolutely disgusting. And the entire outfield bleachers was all blue and white. It was just like I cannot believe that this is where we're at right now as an organization. The Giants have lost nine of ten. Nine of ten. To end the year? To end the year. Wow, I didn't know that. They were awful. I'm oh, a Dodger man. fan. They were well, awful. How about opening day when Brandon Belt came out in a boat? For Bonte, that might have been rock bottom. <sighs> what did I tweet? He better hit 30 home runs. <laughs> I don't even know if he played 30 games. Yeah, eight home runs that year. He actually hit a home run that day. That was one of the worst opening days because... The concession stand workers were like striking or whatnot. Can I be honest? Or, or something was yeah, happening. There was, and online, no, there, there was like 45 minute wait line. It, it was a joke. If you wear the captain hat to this day, I look at you a certain way. Do you see the captain hats up in Toronto? You, you, you're you were the dork. captain hat guy? I'm sorry. You're a dork. The captain hat. Oh, that's fine. You look I'm not, ridiculous. I'm not gonna go that for his birthday now. No, you yeah. look ridiculous. No, no, no. When the women, trust me. When the women wear this captain hats and you're out there as a single guy, if you're, if you're like, you're you know kid, what? It's a good look. That, a I'm not going to call them dorks. No, no. If you're a kid fun, or a woman, some fun fine. people if who do that. If stuff. you're a guy, if you're a grown man, uh, and you're wearing a captain hat, you're a dork. No. Love boat. Yeah, come on. I saw a bachelorette party up in Tahoe. They all had the captain hats on. I was women. like, yeah, yeah, well, you know what? Can't be a dork. This all pales in comparison to the Raiders announcing their leave. John Gruden first year. Hey, let's get rid of Khalil Mack and let's go to the last battle of the Bay at Levi's Dude. and get dropped Mullins. by Nick Mullins. That was so that bad. was rock bottom. He put for together me. a three hundred yard passing day. I believe three touchdowns. Three they were three. having him call Brett Favre after the game. He was so proud of him. Oh my god! That was the, that was the high water mark of Nick Mullins. Oh boy! I think that was the high water mark of the Niners season too because Jimmy yeah. G was already out. Everyone was yeah. talking about. Right. Oh, Jimmy oh, G versus Derek wait. Carr, and we never got Jimmy G versus no, Derek didn't. Carr. Who was the Who was the defensive end that had all the tattoos from UCLA that would do the karate chop? Cassius Marsh. He looked like Nick Bosa in that game. Remember that? That, that was that Remember was. That? He was doing the karate chops after he'd get a sack or whatever the jujitsu thing. 
That was a sad day for the Raiders, man. That was a sad day. But, hey, you know, one of the low moments for the Niners was when Harbaugh's Good call. Got the battle with the Bay. Who was the linebacker the that punked Kaepernick? C.O. Moore. Gosh. At halftime. C.O. Moore and Khalil Mack from Thursday Night Football. Remember that? <laughs> Some people are saying that's why Butcher doesn't like Clay Thompson because he wears a captain hat. Well, Clay can the do it. The truth comes out. Clay can do it. The truth comes out. Let's go to Allen real quick in San Jose. Allen, what's happening? Hey, uh, all time love for 49er fans. This is how I feel. I'm, I'm old enough to vividly remember it. For me, it was the Viking playoff loss Ooh. when Joe got benched. Ooh, good call. 87. That's, that's Anthony good. Carter going crazy on them. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good call. That's a really good Look, call. 92 NFC Championship game when the Cowboys came into Candlestick uh, Park. I thumped them. I cried. Thumped them. I cried as a kid. I was 10 years old. I was sobbing. How about when Steve Young went down in Tempe? Didn't cry. I was just like, damn, it's over. I, I didn't think he was alive, yeah, dude. He, just, mean, he didn't move. They went to commercial with his eyes closed right? on the turf. And his eyes was closed. His eyes was literally closed going into commercial break. I mean, Lawrence Phillips. It was bad. It was bad. He's, I guess we should say rest in peace. Well, he's a bad Phillips. dude. He's a very bad dude. I mean, no doubt. You're, I thought he was going to go like, when OJ got traded to the Niners and looked washed. <laughs> From Lawrence Phillips to OJ Simpson. Well, he said old. And so I I, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I keep just, forgetting I'm that 87's sticking, old. I'm sticking to two pretty bad human beings. Yes. But boy, or can Lawrence. they tote the rock. Oh.